Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Secrets for an Inspirational Life. How are you all tonight here in the United Kingdom? It is evening, and I have to say, the stars are out. I can see them. I'm looking through the window. And I always think, what a beautiful world. You know, whatever is going on in this phenomenal world of, you know, joys and sorrows and tests, when you look up at the sky, it sort of gives you a new reason to feel alive. Because somehow we are all part of this wonderful universe. And beyond that, there are so many undiscovered universes. And yet the most undiscovered are those within ourselves. Because we have so much within us that lays dormant, that we could never even possibly imagine exist. And that, I think, is sometimes the most difficult and the most treacherous and yet the most incredible journey is to find that point within ourselves that has all the answers to all the questions. And at that point, I think... I certainly haven't got there yet, but I'm trying hard. And I think we should give ourselves credit. We're so quick to criticize ourselves and to put ourselves down and to be really hard on ourselves, but really to even be walking on this planet every day of our life is a miracle. So let us enjoy that miracle of life for as long as we are here. Now, I am truly excited. You know, I'm always excited. You know, all of you know that about my guests, but I'm really excited, especially, and really, truly delighted to welcome my guest today, who is the very lovely Sequin K. Sequin is a British contemporary multidisciplinary artist who exhibits internationally and is currently based in Ibiza. She formerly trained in fine art and painting at Camberwell College of Arts and Goldsmiths University in London. Her work explores spiritual realities such as higher sense perception, metaphysics, and the secrets of the universe. Her signature handcrafted artworks offer a window into the power, really, of unseen energy, exploring intriguing beauty and transformative power. Sequin is especially passionate about environmental issues and is raising awareness of animal protection by donating and working with the Ibiza Preservation Fund and the Rimu Tiger Charity in Malaysia. Her most recent collection, which I think is absolutely fabulous, and she will talk about this later, is the 2020 Zodiac Collection, which is actually raising funds to directly protect the Malaysian tigers and their habitat. Sequin's intention is to visually connect the viewer to a field of energy beyond our immediate world. I mean, how amazing is that? These are her words, I have to say. Her artworks are centered around making the unseen seen, with her pieces directly referencing her higher sense perceptions and particularly her psychic abilities. She has exhibited extensively in London, including Monica Art Fair, Clark and Well Design Week, amongst many other well-known galleries. She also has international exhibitions of her work, and they showcase in galleries in Costa Rica, Miami, Ibiza, Canada, Berlin, Ireland, Spain, and Malta, and the list goes on. Today, she shares her wonderful life journey. Welcome, dear Sequin. Oh, Mimi, thank you. 
beautiful introduction and thank you for welcoming me. Oh, Susan, yeah. thank you for coming here and gracing us with your presence. How are oh, you? I'm wonderful today. I'm wonderful. It has been an interesting day, you know, we're, we're living in interesting and wild times. Indeed, so yes. Each day is a total surprise. I have no idea what emotions are going to surface and what challenges are set before me, but it's been a really calm and wonderful day. I'm here in Richmond with a friend and it's been absolutely delightful. So, oh, yes. Richmond, beautiful Richmond. Have you been to Richmond Park recently, Sequin? Of course, it's absolutely oh. stunning and um, <laughs> very a very special place. Very special. So it is. And um, do you know, I like, I especially like, and it's nothing interesting really, um, sort of visually, but it is when you get onto Richmond Hill and then you're overlooking and you can see the river and, mm. you know, especially at night time, there is a certain magic about Richmond, isn't there? Definitely. I think it's the, the deer energy. You know, yes, and, the and the expansiveness and the amount of light that hits all the trees. You just, I've had the most yeah. interesting conversations in Richmond Park. You know, you've got that that long stretch of walk, really transformative walks and talks. You know, it's not a place I've visited that much, but when I do, it's like wow. You you get a change of a change of vision being in that park. It's yes, it's, it's true. Beautiful. It is. It is. I don't know. Do you know whether it's possibly on some sort of energetic ley lines or anything? I'm sure it is. Mm. I'm sure it mm. is. Because definitely, I mean, it feels very calm here, you know, so I'm yes. sure it is. I'll have to look into that a little bit You'll more. You'll have to look that. into that and, um, and tell me. And I especially like Petersham, you know, where the hotel yes. is. Yes. And um, that's a fantastic view as well. Yes. It's mm. really beautiful. It is. It is. Now, you're in Richmond in London at the moment, but you actually yes. live in Ibiza. I do. I do live in Ibiza. I um, I made the move in January this year mm -hmm. and just decided I was called in a way last year, last October, whilst I was having a show in Froome, I was called by a, by a musician friend of mine to to be in Ibiza in a very strange and unusual phone call and someone I hadn't spoken to for four years. But I've been feeling the pull and the call and the magnetism for some time. Mm -hmm. And I felt, why not? If this isn't the time to go, then there never will be. And packed up my studio, my artwork, my collection, most recent collection, and moved over in January. That's very brave. <laughs> That must have been some phone call. It was. I was. I was with two, two very dear sisters of mine in Glastonbury, and we all in unison kind of went right. We're moving to Ibiza when a, a musician friend dropped us a call, and um, we all just felt Ibiza in such strong energy. You know, it was just like all three of us were kind of looking for a new place to to birth our new visions together and and that's the place so yeah that's beautiful and when are you going to go back there I'm going to be going back there in October as I have a show that I'm doing and I'll be back in October which I'm looking forward to very much it's one of those things that when life calls you, me and you having this conversation, weren't we, a couple of mm. weeks ago, where, mm. um, do you remember, and, and um, I'd heard somebody mention some poetry, and I've thought about this, actually, of, um, for the listeners out there, um, myself and Sequel were having this sort of a very deep conversation about moments, and I had previously, um, to my conversation with her, had heard somebody say uh, a poet in fact had said is it the moment that waits for us or are we the ones who wait for the moment and I often think about these things in life is it actually that time waits for us because they say time doesn't wait for anyone but surely the right moment sort of alights upon our lives when something has to change in our life 
I don't know. What do you think, Sequim? Oh, you know what? I've been really sort of musing over this myself and mm. I feel it's like a marriage, you know? I feel like your internal world sort of goes all conjures up these moments and these ideas and these things. And, and at some point I've noticed in my experience is the external world seems to marry your internal world. You know, when you have that clarity and they kind of meet and you just go, this is the moment I'm doing this. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. But moments are very mysterious because you never know what state you're going to be in when they happen. Mm. And I think if you're if you're attuned and aware, you you kind of feel like like I had the moment of moving to Ibiza. It was like a marriage of my internal yearning and an external calling. You know, it was like boom, it's happened, it's done, we're going in, and then just I felt like it was a marriage of some sort, like a thin layer of two worlds meeting. That's how it felt. Yeah, it's like a collision of world worlds sometimes. Yeah, and I, and I, isn't it? And I and sometimes I think to myself, is it that it's something within our soul? I suppose that lets the moment know that we are ready. Yes, yes. It. it, it I feel there's a lot of preparation. You know, we might we may have an idea or a vision, but there's we need, might need to prepare ourselves so much for a change. And that could be physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physiologically, something needs to shift it. So many things often may need to be worked through before you can then take action. And I just, moments are very mysterious. They can take you to another place very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the point is that every sort of moment is a change everything is in this perpetual motion it doesn't ever stay the same we think it stays the same because if we're bound by our m- mind perceptions but in fact if we were to go with our sort of innermost calling and innermost vibrations we'll realize that in fact we're like a symphony of sound mm. Yes, I can totally agree with that. And it's, you know, moments can, I mean, it takes a second to change your mind. You know, I mean, I just find that mind blowing that it just takes one second of a thought of a millisecond and you have, and you've changed your mind completely. And your whole life is then just redirected within a second. So it's yeah. like, yeah. oh, yeah. That's Incredible. beautiful, actually. That's really. beautiful what you just said, because in fact, it's true. because. You could tomorrow, or I could tomorrow, decide, I don't know, I'm going to Timbuktu. Or you could go to, I don't know, (laughs) Outer Mongolia. I mean, it is literally that powerful that something can come along so strongly as a message, whether that be within us or someone Mm. arrives into our life and reminds us. And that's it. As you said, life is changed 360 degrees. For sure. For sure. And I, I've experienced that a lot in my life. And and I feel like every second we are changing, you know, every second you are evolving. And even, you know, the question of time becomes such a fascinating aspect within a creative's life or anyone's life. You know, you seconds can feel like minutes sometimes and years can feel like seconds. You know, it's, you know, I, I, this is what, you know, what I was applying with my Zodiac collection is I was trying to distill time as well and distill like the distance between the stars and between the cosmos and myself and just getting to this kind of oneness state of like, wow, I think, you know, it's life is when you sit still, life is pretty amazing. It is. And I I want to talk about your collection because I find it fascinating and what you've written about it. But before we do that, let's just go back a little bit so the listeners can know a little bit about you, Sequin, um, because you're a very mysterious lady and a very mystical lady. But how did all of this begin? How did this journey into this cosmos in a way begin with your art and because you started at a very early age 
what happened yeah. to, to inspire you? Okay, so I've been creating artwork since the age of 15 and I had my first commission from my school at about the age of 16 to design a mosaic for outside the design and create a mosaic for outside the library. And I decided the title in French, knowledge is power. And um, it took me about six months to create. My father helped me. My mother was very encouraging as well. Absolutely loved creating it. I found so much bliss in working with mosaics and textiles and textures. Um, and I would say that was the first seed for my creativity. And before that, I'd been painting and drawing and exploring who I am through material. Mm -hmm. And that just carried on. You know, I went to art college to Camberwell and carried that on for four or five years um, and actually became a little bit lost and confused as an artist in ways as you know, art college can kind of really try and get you to hone your concepts and your ideas. And I, I didn't really have much of those. I had a lot of activity and emotion inside of me that needed to express itself without much reason. And I would just prolifically make, make, make. And um, I didn't really understand that it was maybe linked to some early, early childhood trauma. So I was just making, making, making. Between the ages of 22 and 24 I went through a very dark period psychologically and um, stopped making artwork and went into quite a dark place when I was living in Brixton and what kind of brought me back to a sense of sanity was sequins and it started off by me staying inside a lot I was in my Brixton flat would pop down to Brixton Market and just the only thing I'd see was sequins, sparkly things, shiny things. I was just attracted to the light. And I think it was that was myself trying to find its way back to the light from this sort of dark psychological state. And I took them home and started sequining telephones and sequining bits of kitchen objects, spoons, knives, um, coffee pots, anything I could really get my hands on. And kind of just was just started sequining objects, like household objects, you know, wanting to transform my immediate reality into something that would kind of get me through each day. And then that, then that spread onto canvases and larger objects, and it kind of exploded. You know, I spent a good couple of years obsessively sequining things and regaining strength, regaining light. Um, that led me to meet a wonderful man who offered me a studio in Love for Junction and also led me to my sequence sponsor, who I have a lot of respect and time for. He used to run Josie Rose. Um, and that's where it all started. It, it came from a place of, of um, struggle and needing to find a pathway back to the light. And, and here I am, quite a few years later. You know, obviously that journey has transformed into other materials such as crystals and building pyramids, but it's it's finding the way back home, I would say, and like the way back to the light was the seedling for, for my creativity. You talk about um, the spiritual realities and metaphysics and the secrets of the universe and the transformation of, I suppose it's an alchemy, isn't it, of the self? Because I know you do a lot of um, work called shadow work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. tell us a little bit about that and how that came about. Yeah, so, um, so through my creativity, I was uncovering aspects of myself that were very hidden and very troubled especially connecting to my sexuality and, and my childhood and certain things um and I've been working for nine years with a specific life coach working through the subconscious the subterranean realms of the psyche where this stuff is is high you know is there and, and kind of needs to be dealt with and through this process of shadow work that I've been working 
working through and with a therapist, it has just illuminated my life incredibly. It has shown me the trauma lines that run through my body. It's shown me the trauma lines that run through my ancestry and, and doing quantum work to go back and clear those. And it showed me my behavior patterns in the world. And by digging deep, you know, consistently for over a few years and working with someone who can mirror some of the dark, sticky stuff of the psyche, you can, you can clear it. And by clearing this, you know, I can feel my, my body, my soul, my energy start to come back and you can start to feel your whole self come alive and a new reality kind of becomes presented in front of you where your sensitivity is much heightened and just yeah there's so, there's so much to shadow work and it presents itself in different ways but I can honestly say without it I wouldn't be making the work that I am today I really really wouldn't it's about uncovering shadow work's about being very authentic with yourself and uncovering layers of one would say protection pain mm. difficulty and and doing that with a professional can you know lead to big awakenings within the self and for others around you as well and I suppose for all of us it's a very painful process at times to peel back things that sometimes it's easier in some ways to bury them and mm -hmm. to get them but at other times when you look back on your life all the issues that we have in our life I think are all the darknesses that we haven't faced mm -hmm. but that's not so easy is it oh no it's it's, it's not easy as I as I feel we can't do this work alone and we can't fully see ourselves from reading a lot about transpersonal psychology. You know, I fully understand how the brain works, the body works, this, you know, how the spiritual body works. And we cannot see things 100% from our own perspective. Mm. So to have someone mirror and reflect back to us things, it's, it's very useful. And, you know, when you get that feeling like you're stuck, like you're constantly stuck. And I think yeah. when you're an artist and you're spending a lot of time alone reflecting on yourself and, you know, what the pieces really speak to you. You know, I've sometimes made a piece of work and burst into tears and kind of go, whoa, that's what I'm feeling. And is that okay to be feeling that? And God, can I not help myself with that? You know, the pieces will mirror back to you, the inner workings of, of your mind. And I, and I think, you know, part of my personality type and my nature is really committed to sort of, you know, shining a light in dark corners. And if I see something that could be tweaked and improved, I love details, you know, I love details in the visuals and in the decorative world and the art world. I just, like Grayson Perry is one of my, one of my heroes and he's talked about this heavily, you know, really sharpening the tools of your inner mind and you can see it, you know, very profoundly in your work where you go, wow, that could be, that could be worked on and helped and loved, you know, and I think these deep experiences in life really show you where you're at as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, and I've had a lot of support, meaning I've had, uh, I think, a lot of angels in my life. I really had a lot of angels around me and, and guiding and supporting my paths. I mean, a lot of gratitude. It's an amazing thing really that I think when you become open and it's such a difficult thing you know so many people choose to remain closed and it's such a shame in a way because there's so many things that we can discover about ourselves that can really truly change our life in a way and you talk about making the unseen Seen, and I find that fascinating because, in a way, your work as an artist is exactly that. Mm -hmm. I think the work of the artist, I mean, whether that be a painter, um, you know, a musician, a singer, a writer, whatever it is, you know, in the arts, you know, it's something that 
you know, they say that artists always take something from heaven and bring it to earth. That's their job um, to make life more beautiful. But tell us a little bit about this energy work, because your work, especially your recent collection that I have to say is remarkable, is full of this vibrancy. What is that energy that propels you forward? What is that um, unseen energy behind you as a person? Gosh, what a what 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 a question, Mimi. Um, I, I the uns- yeah the energy behind me as a person. I mean, it's I guess it's this flow state that I enter. I mean, the first time I experienced it was when I used to work at Sadler's Wells. And I remember watching a dancer and I, and I felt something move inside of me. Um, and I just remember being like, oh my gosh, she's, dan- like, she's dancing like the inside of my body. I, I could feel, feel such a connection. I think when I started painting, I started to feel something move inside of me when I would paint very heavily or draw very abstractly. And I felt like it was an inner weaving that was happening and unraveling, like I was unraveling my soul onto the canvas. And what I felt over the years is there's such intensity inside me that I find very hard to communicate vocally most of the time. There's this abundance of energy around us. There's things I see, there's things I feel, there's things I sense that I can't put into words. And therefore, I have to sort of get it out onto canvas, either through illustration, painting or sequin art. Um, And it feels like a sort of frenetic energy that needs to move and needs to dance sort of from the center of my body and through my hands. And there's absolutely no logic. There's no logic to it. and And it's trying to bring out this energy from inside of me that I see or I feel or I sense in my visionary field and trying to bring it to show other people it's a form of communication of that maybe potential need need for my insides to be seen because I can't communicate them I hope that's making sense um and the inside of my psyche to for it to be seen because I feel so many of us that level of intimacy are maybe not seen and I think that's one of my, it's about fears as well. One of my deep fears is not being seen or not showing what's going on inside of me in some way. And I guess musicians do this and, you know, actors, actresses, painters, many of us do it in different ways of showing the inner workings of what's going on in the body and showing it externally. And it's like a relief. It's like a massive sigh of like right that's done it's 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 come out I've given birth to you know my experience of my world and to be recognized for what we are Mm. and for who we are Mm. I think it's a lifetime's work Mm -hmm. because who really very rarely I suppose who really recognizes us you know, who really can see that there we are holding our heart, you know, trembling at this sort of gateway of frailty of life, you know, and waiting for someone just to say, I see you. You mm-hmm. know, it's that space that you spoke about, you know, the space between two people, even mm-hmm. the distance, that distance, I suppose through your art and through art maybe you can bring people closer to to each other yes yes it's about that intimacy and Mm. one of the things that I've struggled with is intimacy with myself and my true feelings and spending a lot of time alone you become very intimate with yourself and you're like wow what am I feeling and you express it and you reflect on it and I you know, not not knowing my birth father, I think also has triggered a lot of um, a lot of that that inquiry into being seen, understood, recognized for the wisdom that we all carry. You know, and it's 
And I think, you know, just from being around my friends and family members who also carry similar patterns of not being seen, I, I see one of the greatest tragedies in life is not us seeing each other. You know, I'd love to bring people, you know, closer together through discussion or debate or just seeing something like with William Morris, another one of my inspirations, you know, seeing something in beauty and it harmonizes people. It goes, they both go, ah, oh, I get it. I see it. I see what you're trying to say. And that, 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 you know, that harmony that can happen when you're looking at something, you're observing something with people together, when you're viewing art, when you're listening to music, you know, it brings people together. True. It it harmonizes the energy field. And then you've got this level of intimacy between people because you've all shared this visual piece or this moment, as we said, or this piece of music. And I just think there's nothing more beautiful, really, and touching. Do you think that unless we are intimately, and I say this on all levels, I suppose, of understanding of understanding ourselves mm. in this really private world of ours unless we have the courage to face that intimacy within ourselves I don't know if it's truly possible to be intimate with anybody else Yes, I do. I have within within the work that I have been completing that has that has come up, you know, that the, the biggest journey is is the one in the hardest journey. And I do feel that the more inward that you go into this infinite space within your, yourself, mm. you extend outwards into other people. It's like a boomerang effect. And I just find intimacy so fascinating. You know, what parts are we intimate with? You know, when you are alone, what do you think and feel? And I just think human beings are so fascinating, you know, and just, yeah, intimacy, I, I, I feel it's, it's, it's a big one. It's a big one. And I'm, I, I'm very grateful to my, my creative practice because it brought me to a deep level of intimacy with myself and probably I'd say saved my life in many ways, you know, because you know, part of my darkness in my 20s was being separate from source, God, whatever we want to call it, higher power. You know, I don't um, want to be too linear with that. But the separation from myself, you know, that that darkness sort of covering me in between the world and me and myself, it was so big. And, and the thread, the golden thread of the sequin and the golden sequins reminding me of the infinite wisdom inside to go in, to communicate with myself. It took me years, you know, years of studio work time to do that. And all I can say is my, from my experience, my intimate relationships have greatly flourished deeply from the self-work and the, and, and more, more intimate work I'm doing with myself. And it is never ending and it's a beautiful path and it's, yeah, it's it's brought me quite close to a bliss state, I would say, very close to a bliss state coupled with, with, with deep psychotherapy as well. In a way, sequins, sequins, I mean, even the word sequin for me is like glitter. I, I, I think I told you this. It's like glitter has the same effect. For me, I, I'm obsessed with glitter. And when I was young, I would just throw glitter everywhere. Um, and glitter was quite expensive um, at the time. And it wasn't, you know, the world was a very different place. But somehow, if I surrounded myself with sprinklings of glitter, it sort of made life easier. And even your name, when I think about that, and then the work that you do, and the works of art that you do, that is actually being intimate with the world, because that is who you are. You're putting yourself, your whole being in front of the world and saying, this is me. Oh, Mimi, thank you. Yes, I, I guess in some way I am. I'm 
consciously maybe not doing it in that way but that that's how it comes across I mean yeah I just I just make I'm just making and just can't stop making and and I guess that is the inner weavings of me are becoming woven on the outside so people can see that very clearly and it's expression of light it's an expression of life force and I wouldn't say the works come from me they, they come through me and I guess I'm communicating what's coming through and quite yeah that's that's an interesting thing because I don't think any anyone really I think we're just vessels aren't we we're not um we're vessels for the source and we're just sort of different you know music to a far greater orchestra that's being played out there but I'm curious sequin in that there seems to be a greater message also that you want to share with the world in a way I know I likened it to sort of we were talking earlier I have to say to the listeners and it's like a Pandora's box but also it's like a treasure trove what is your message in fact what is your life message my life message okay so my message to the world is I mean there's there's so many threads and messages with it within my work my main, my main intention through my creativity is to bring joy into people's lives. I have a deep understanding of the human condition and, you know, I want to bring joy and like relief and healing to people, to people's eyes and to people's hearts. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the big messages. And also to educate, to educate people of how profound it is to be in a human body, how profound it is to be on this gorgeous planet and to bring people back to a state of love, I would say, to a state of beauty and love for themselves and to each other. I would say that is my my main aim when I'm creating. I'm just you know, also to awaken to this ancient, incredible wisdom that's within our bodies and our body temples and that's in these, you know, these, these cultures that I explore, you know, it's, there's this stuff that I don't even know yet that I'm uncovering and learning things each day. And it's like, you know, I, I think also uncover your greatness, uncover your greatness is a message for every person I, I come across and meet and my artwork wants to show is uncover like the beauty of who you are. That I said, uh, that I feel is would be a resounding message for my viewers. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> what a beautiful thing, Sequin. What a beautiful thing. If only <laughs> we would remind each other mm. all the time. You know, we spend so much time worried about this and that and nonsense when we could be reminding each other how beautiful we are yes I agree and it wasn't you know I had a very profound moment with my life coach where he mirrored that back to me it was life-changing it was life-changing on many levels and it was like a gift that I've been in so much darkness for so long I hadn't realized and um when he mirrored that message to me I was like oh my gosh this is what I want to mirror back to the world you know it 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 pulled me from from a very dark place so it's yeah I see a lot I see incredible people all around me all the time and I just want to share that joy and enthusiasm for life and whatever you're going through many people have been there as well and it is a collective shared thing what we call life these ups and down these valleys these mountains we all share that we all share it and we're all incredible in what we're going through especially at the moment and you talk a lot about the darkness that you've been through of course it's something that touches everyone's life I think 
in different ways. Yes. And some shadows are deeper and longer and darker. What would you say that keeps the shadows at bay, so to speak, in life? For me, what keeps the shadows at bay has been my creativity very, very much. Um, Is waking up and knowing that I have an avenue to express, knowing I have a channel to the external world, knowing that whatever I create is okay and acceptable and knowing there's a blank piece of paper where I can create my own world and um, and obviously some very deep friendships as well and allies in my life and um, poetry, you know, really poetry and it takes daily work as well, reminders and changing your lifestyle also helps keep it's still a daily practice for me even today to to keep things out of my consciousness and it's it's definitely getting better but I'd say my creativity has been my lifeline one of the biggest lifelines I've had really it's true I know that um even talking personally when you are in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing, then all the shadows seem to flee. Yes. It's when we are not in alignment and we go against what our inner being wants us to do, I think then we have problems, we encounter problems. But when we sort of align ourselves, you know, when you're on the right track, when when you're going you're going to know when you're on the right track because there's a peacefulness there's a serenity but there's so many distractions aren't there and how do you get through those distractions especially now people are finding it especially in these times um so difficult seeking to actually blow away these shadows to Mm. overcome these distractions what what do you think what's the answer to that well my answer is only I can only really give my experience and I'm telling you having a studio a door a lock and a key (laughs) you know closing that door and creating my own world and turning my phone off and being with myself is really has just, just having a desk and a table. You know, I even took myself actually to, off to Switzerland on an art residency for a month to, to, because I was getting so distracted with my life and other things and to distracted with things that weren't actually my life path that I had to take myself to another country, another location and just re- reorder, refocus my consciousness. And I felt the distractions drop. And I could just make, you know, make some new work, see things clearly. So it's it's really putting yourself in a place where you can um, you can flow, you can flow. And distractions take many forms; they really do. So it's it's really working out what is it that that's distracting you? Is it your phone? Is it people? Is it an attitude even? And seeking that that advice, that help, or that new direction, or putting yourself in a new environment it can change your mind and your your state of being dramatically actually that's very true and I think that this whether it be a studio whether it be a room or whether whether it be I don't know a forest or where, wherever but I think every soul needs that time of as we spoke about intimacy privacy just so that it can be free. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, you, to have a direct connection with yourself and the beyond, however yeah. you see that, you you need quiet, silence, nature, reflective time. And, you know, the sequence also about reflection, reflecting in this fast-paced, modern, beautiful world, complicated world that we're in. Do we, do we take enough time to to reflect or are we on our phones and I catch myself constantly on my phone where I'm not reflecting I'm not 
absorbing. I'm not receiving. I'm not in receptive mode. You know, it's that reflection, like the sequin reflecting. You know, is the wisdom. That's where you you can get those breakthroughs. And I remember a really good friend of mine saying, "Sequin, you don't reflect at all." It's about twelve years ago. Um, and just that stuck with me. He's like, you don't self-reflect. And I think that's what we were saying earlier, where the shadows can come in, where you don't really sit back, take stock, go deep. And then you can see what things are moving inside of you. And then you can make friends with them. That only comes with time and space, really. And courage, I suppose. Courage, yes. Mm. Yes. That's not such an easy thing to find courage um, to face oneself. Mm -hmm. I I think I got to a point in my life where I didn't really have a choice. You know, you you sometimes say that, you know, we don't have a choice in life. We're just guided. And I think that's what I didn't really have a choice, you know, so it, it was, it was go this path and improve or, you know, I hate to sound dramatic, but you're not going to survive much longer in this world. That's that's how it manifested for me. Absolutely. You know, I don't think that any of us can survive in this world in these times unless we reconnect back to our true self. Yes. I think it's impossible. Because the distractions, the noise out there is too loud. Mm -hmm. But in a split second, we can change that. We can switch it off. Completely. Mm. Completely. Completely. And through creativity, that's, that's what I've done. I've managed to switch off the outside world and give space for that inner world. The more we pay attention and attune to our inner worlds, the more we can understand what's going on, the more we understand the power of being human right now. You know, it's accessing that, that inner power. And, and with that comes accessing all the stuff we've repressed as well, suppressed this lifetime, other lifetimes. And it's, you know, it's, I think it's one of the thespians, artists, musicians. It's one of the, it's a role that you undertake, you know, know yourself and um, bit by bit things can change around you once you've done that inner work, but nothing can change until that inner, that inner work has, has really been started in some way. And I suppose you spoke earlier about your heritage. Now, what is your heritage? Because that's quite fascinating. Yes, I'm half Irish Mm -hmm. and half Moroccan. I actually did a DNA test with a little bit of Sudanese and Egyptian 1% Indian. So it's a right old mashup. Um, There's lots of DNA fractals going on in there. And I would say that definitely, I mean, I love both the cultures. I've been to Ireland, been to Morocco. I find them both extremely fascinating. Mm. Um, They go beyond language as well. Um, And I I just feel it all, it's just coming out in my work in a a really sort of unsaid way. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, I'm fascinated by culture anyway and how, you know, different lands weave themselves through your body and weave themselves through your communication. And you, there's a communication beyond words that's happening, that's happening with your ancestors and what's going on around you. I think it's important as much as we can, of course, know to know about our ancestors because there's so much there. There's so much information in the DNA of what we're carrying from centuries before. And that also comes, I suppose, in in effect as to know who you are, because there's so many things influencing it. This present moment is is influenced by all those ancestors and all those things that somehow a person at any given time on earth has a responsibility not only for themselves, 
Mm-hmm. Um, but for what has gone on before to what will go on after. So it's quite a big responsibility. Oh, completely. I feel, especially if I may say so, for women now, you know, I, I've mm. really sat with my role as an artist and my role as, you know, a woman, a free woman who can express herself, have her studio just absolutely go with the flow. And I've really reflected on my mother's role, my 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 grandmother's role, my great grandmother's role, and thought, did they have these choices? Did they have these freedoms? And I've often felt there are many women living inside me. And I thought, gosh, I'm the result of all these women and men. And I've got to do my best. You know, it's for them. You know, there's, you know, the, the most recent collection is only, I've only really coined it then is I'm actually doing this for my ancestors. You know, and I'm probably completing some, some kind of work that they never were able to do. Maybe I definitely have, le- you know, women who are weaving lace and textile workers in my lineage and my ancestry. I've gone back through my ancestry on the Irish side and I've had visions of lace workers and there's something that my hands are doing that's there's like a miasm, you know, it's an ancestral miasm. And it's, yes. yeah. it's powerful yeah. to recognise that and give, give gratitude and be like, wow, wow, they're all working through me. They're all working through me and... And that that's quite that's quite a powerful feeling, an honor as well. Yes, it's an honor, mm. an absolute mm. honor, to know that you are the one carrying on in this time. You know, in this lifetime, you have a role to play. You know, we all have a role to play. Yes, um, in order to carry that on to the next generation or to the next time as such you know whenever that is in history but sequin where do you feel that you belong oh what a question wow Belo- belonging is really important i remember having a discussion with a very dear friend of mine um belonging is huge actually mm. and that's been a real a real sore spot for me i've moved many times and moved from different countries. I've lived in Goa, Malta, London, many different places. Um, now in Ibiza, I really feel that once I moved to Ibiza, I was like, oh my gosh, I belong here. That was my first sense for quite a long time that I belong here. I can make it work. This is where I belong. But even deeper than that, going to a cellular level is belonging on the earth and belonging the belonging of being alive and just feeling at home in my body, you know, feeling that I belong to my body, that wherever I am in the world, I belong. And that's taken a long time to actualize and integrate. Um, So I'd say belonging on the earth and feeling like I have a right to be here has been a long journey, but it's one that I'm very close to completing. That's so beautiful. <laughs> that is yeah. so beautiful. Isn't that absolutely amazing? That is such a beautiful line. Okay. Yeah, it's it's been a painful journey, but for interesting and also very wonderful to kind of question mm. that belonging, like where do I belong? And it's not mm. just where you physically are. I've definitely felt belonging all throughout my life with my family, with friends. But that deep belonging that you're connected through your feet down to the earth, to the to Mother Gaia, to the planet that you belong to her, with her in a kind of symbiotic relationship. I've only really just done that merging in the past couple of years through grounding work and that belonging. That wherever you are on the planet, you belong. You know, it's 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 a it's a big connection. I think a few of us are still pushing down to ground here and be like I've come I've I've arrived (laughs) yeah and I belong I've got got a place I've got a yeah I've got a body that belongs in this space wherever I am yeah and it's it's healing it's healing that those wounds and then you 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 that sense of belonging kind of runs through your veins and it's 
you know, I'm in Richmond, but I live in Ibiza, but I belong where I am right now. That connection is to, to this moment is, is an important one. And it's yeah. very connected to belonging, I feel. Belonging, you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Belonging yeah, to your body. Mm, mm. Mm. And I think that the, we can get, I suppose, disassociated with our body in the sense that I believe that we are a soul that's occupying a body that's mm-hmm. the vessel here on earth and that we have a right to be here and we have a right to our body and as you said wherever you are it, it is really somehow irrelevant what's relevant is that you belong to yourself mm-hmm. yes very much so very much so I you know part of the darkness that I went through or difficult time you know is that disassociation and using many other things to keep on disassociating and it wasn't until I did my soul retrieval about five years ago that I felt myself belong you know it's that bringing home coming back to yourself coming back to your body it's extremely powerful and that's linked to the to the shadow work is calling back all these different parts of yourself that have potentially fractured through experiences that we have you know and I talk a a great length to friends about this and they feel you know these parts get fractured and you're just doing that work to come home to to recover come back to this belonging it's absolutely and you know um do you like cats at all I adore cats. I yeah. adore them. I, yes, I adore cats. Yeah, the whole cat family I adore. Yeah, I'm into cats. I know you are. I want you <laughs> to tell us about that. Um, now, cats, I know that if you, you know, with cats, if you touch a cat and it gets a little bit cheesed off, it will mm-hmm. lick itself because it doesn't want you touching that because that's its body. And you've sort of invaded that space at that moment. And it's sort of, in a way, I always look at it as when a cat, when you touch the cat and it licks itself, even though Mm -hmm. it's sort of reclaiming back its possession, you know, it's me, you know, you have to have permission, you know, to enter this territory called me. Mm -hmm. And I think we allow ourselves sometimes to, I suppose, be hurt and abused and you know made to feel pretty rubbish by other people when you talk about this being parts of I suppose shadows of being fractured parts of a shadow and every time someone does something to us it moves us in a way that maybe isn't quite correct so we have to retrieve all those parts of ourselves again to heal in order to heal and I think that's one of the most difficult things to do is to have enough respect for ourselves to not allow other people to have this claim on us whether that Mm. be physically or energetically and I think that comes also with this sense of belonging that once I don't know how you feel about this but once we belong in our body and we know that that's our body we have somehow a greater respect for ourselves of course I can see you know it definitely all interlinks it's all simultaneously connected of course, but you you know, with um, when things happen to us, things get worn away. You know, self respect. Things do shift and move, and it just takes time to recover. But you know, I've also had an incredible amount of help on that journey as well, and guidance. And it's um, yeah, and it's, it's important just, to have that help. I, I yes, I, I feel it is. I. I I have to count my lucky stars and um I don't think I'd have done this by myself I really wouldn't 
it's but difficult it's, um, sometimes to reach out though isn't it to yes ask for that we all sometimes feel that we can sort of fade into insignificance but that's not really the correct way I think when we are at our lowest is the point that we really should feel brave enough to ask for that help yes yes and I feel if we listen closely enough our soul is crying crying out for that help and I would say that's how I met my life coach was my soul was screaming over my physical body he could hear it I could hear it but I couldn't hear it if you get what I mean um and it was my the part of my my soul was fractured was pushing me in all the directions of like just heal and grow heal and grow you know it was I, I mean it's a very complex subject you know healing trauma how to work through it we're all completely unique we're all completely different and we all work in different ways but the first thing is to pick up a phone or call a friend and then you know my friend was the one who guided me towards this help and it's just pick up a phone and, and speak to someone and it you'll be surprised what manifests when you just say I need help I really need support you'll be surprised what what comes back very much so and it's the first step. That's the most hardest in yes. anything that you do in life. Yes. But it's so important now to ask for that help, whatever it is. You know, don't think, I have to say this out there to everyone listening, that yes. sometimes we may feel despondent and that our problems are really overwhelming. But in all honesty, as you said, you know, just a phone call or just, a cry in a way, just a good cry to release the emotions and to ask for help is such an important thing because when you tell me about your life sequin and the things that you have been through, which are very deep for you, but for you to now have come out at the other end and to be such a successful artist, do you sometimes stand back and wonder how you did it? Yes, I do. And I think it is, I feel it's just step by step, year by year. And to keep on this, on this path, you know, it's one year you might look at this aspect of yourself and rest for a year and another year you might go right I really want to work on my physical body and clear this up um but I feel it's sort of a commitment to self-improvement that can then accelerate and trust me I have you know uh, you know many interesting things ahead of me um I think it's just this commitment to walk towards you know a healthier planet and a healthier you I mean healthier relationships do you think gosh could I have a healthy relationship with the planet with the earth myself with the people around me and you know what am I doing to contribute to the relationships in my life and I think it's keep asking questions I think it's just the, that inquiring mind and to keep asking questions the curiosity I suppose it's like yeah Never to let go of that childlike state within us where, you know, as children, I think we're all curious and we want to know everything that's going around in the world. And somehow, sometimes as we get older, we become, well, we can become a little bit boring and, you know, I suppose a, a bit conceited in some ways, but if we could have that sort of effervescence of a child and this childlike state and never lose that within us and I suppose art is like that um it everyone can relate to it everyone can express themselves through art you know that's why art therapy is such a good medium for healing yeah but I want to ask you um about your latest collection, which is the Zodiac collection. And what is behind that? What, how did that come about? So the Zodiac collection was conceived in India 
when I went to visit a dear artist friend of mine in Bangalore and I just kept going heaven earth heaven earth got to bring the heaven to earth got to bring the heaven to earth and um, he introduced me to all these patterns and geometries from the deities within India how you know showed me this incredible book of how absolutely every single thing is connected in the cosmos universe down to the very cells in our body and uh, that was my first book called what is the book um, it was a book by John Bader, and he's a Veda teacher. He teaches on the metaphysics of Veda, mm-hmm. and it and it and it showed me these illustrations of, you know, how the inside of our bodies are connected to the constellations, and how the inside of our minute cells are connected to the outer planets. And it was just a mad book that was like this, like quantum sort of physics connection. I was like wow, science can actually prove how we're all interrelated and interconnected, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just got me fascinated into the constellations, astrology, transpersonal psychology. And I just wanted to illuminate that. I'm fascinated by people and personality and I find people hilarious and fascinating and wonderful and confusing. That's (laughs) the beauty of it. And I find those things in myself. Um, And I just wanted to illuminate each constellation. And it became a very moving project. I went very deep into myself, did a bit of um, therapy throughout last year as well, and really uncovered blockages within my own heart and mind. And um, basically was trying trying to say that we are all, we are all connected. We, you know, we are one song. You know, we are connected to the universe. This planet's connected to the universe. And it's about connection and connecting to people and also playfully kind of playing on people's zodiac signs, going, God, look how look how gorgeous you are. This is how I see you, Virgos. This is how I see you, Pisces. This is what I, again, it's how to make these patterns of personality and these vibrations of the constellations and the myths and the stories we tell ourselves into visual form. Um, it kind of an abstract way, but an inspiring way that I hope. I'm just fascinated by astrology and astronomy. I just so deep in it. I love it. It's a fascinating subject, isn't it? And for okay. those, you know, I don't. It's not about um, newspaper horoscopes. I have no. To say. no, this is something much deeper, isn't it? That you delve yes. into. Yes, it's about patterns of of behaviour. It's mm-hmm. also about illuminating how powerful our minds are. And it is a playful, you know, collection as well. It's, you know, not, I think it's also about truth. And I'm not stating any truth about astrology. You know, all these myths are man-made. They come from our mind, you know. So it's it's kind of playing on that as well and showing us how powerful we are, that we project our man-made myths and stories tales of the conscious subconscious mind we project it right up into the heavens right up into the heavens and I playfully was kind of bringing that down again and actually how our you know it's also with our ancestors these stories have you know survived time we're still telling these stories today We, we assign Saturn with personality Pluto with personality it's just brilliant I love it you know but also when you kind of see this mystical edge where you do read your your birth chart and some aspects of your personality. And most people that do that actually go, wow, that's actually what I'm going through right now. Yeah, it, it, is, it, it yeah. is so powerful. It's most people like, God, I'm really getting into astrology now. And it's it's a map of the unseen again. It's showing you mm. what you can't see. And that's it's a great tool a great tool it is and if you think about in ancient times more so and I'm sure there are people out there now that do it but I I suppose the real ones who can read the pathway of the stars are are not out there but sort of hidden somewhere in some I don't know mountain where people can't reach them and they have become possibly hermits but the way that it can be read everything can be read through the constellations and 
where everything is at a particular time, like right now, and where every planet and every star is, it actually affects everything that is alive. Yes, completely. And that can be explained through science. That's what I understand through the, through the yeah. power of Veda, you know, and that was my first like big illumination into, whoa, it's patterns. Everything's a pattern. Mm, mm, mm. Everything can be interpreted in its own way, but there are patterns of behavior. And, you know, we also have those patterns inherent in us and it's, it just blows my mind. Even now, you know, I cannot say I fully un- under I cannot fully understand. I can do it scientifically. I can read someone's birth chart and explain to them what's going on. And I've had my chart read many times by other astrologers, and it's it's really surprised me what's come forth. But it's everything that's you know happening within is also happening without. Everything that's happening above is happening below. It's a very old adage, very old. And it's the more we attune ourselves to that, the more it's just, it changes your life. The more you attune to the mystery of it as well, of astrology. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And not just astrology. I know you mentioned crystals and people think, oh, you know, some people will say, oh, that's a load of mumbo jumbo, but it's not. I found out the other day I was looking at watches and I don't wear a watch, but I was getting it from a, for a friend of mine as a birthday present. And I found out, did you know this sequin, that some faces of watches are actually made from sapphire? Yes. Yes. Wow. I never yeah. knew that. Crystals. Like, yeah. They're conductors yes. and amplifiers. They're conductors and yes. amplifiers. They're incredible. Crystals are absolutely incredible. Oh, my incredible. goodness. And I mean, yeah. I'm a lover. I have them everywhere around yeah. my house, in the garden, you know, everywhere, everywhere, in the trees. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I have them everywhere. And as you said, the more we can go back to these ancient wisdoms and these ancient traditions, the happier we'll be. I think, I feel it's more in all we are. I think the more we we go back into sort of this understanding of our connection to the cosmos, the earth and ourselves. Yeah. I think more in all we are, that just brings, that's just, you know, happiness is a byproduct of that. You're just like, oh my God, amazing. Wow. I mean, the more research I do, the more in awe I am and inspired I am and ecstatic mm. I become because you're like, yeah. you know, I barely scratch the surface of what it means to be alive. I feel I barely scratch the surface of histories and cultures and we are consistently discovering new archaeological sites all around the world we have barely scratched the surface of what has been before us you know and and that's just staggering staggering you know our universe is still expanding (laughs) it's like I'm just in awe you know of where we are right now during this time what we're able to discover, uncover and reveal. And it's getting more exciting, you know, day by day. We've got incredible technologies on this planet and in outer space. And each day I'm learning something about the past or the potential future. And I'm just so grateful to be alive during these times, difficult and challenging as they are, but we're being, our eyes are being opened very quickly to some very powerful realities. And we have to be part of that change. Yes. And be open to that change because unless we are uh, part of the change, um, we can't move forward into the great awakening as so many people feel it. You know, Mm. people are feeling this great awakening, this new era that is upon us, and not in the way that possibly anyone could ever have imagined and I think there's so much more to come that is unexpected but not in the way that I think most people think it will be it will be something far more glorious and wonderful yes I am this I I feel it's all about going vertical not horizontal um 
it's this inner awakening. It's awakening to our greatness, to our wisdom, to our timelines. And we're going vertical. You know, we've been asked to be still. We've been asked to go inside. We've been asked to examine. We've been asked to re regress into ourselves a little bit. A lot of stuff's happening on the planet that's that's troubling, worrying, also very fascinating. But we're being asked to reassess our values, our connections, our intelligences are being, you know, challenged. And it's um, all this to awaken ourselves, awaken our minds and awaken our hearts. And I've definitely had new realizations in the past year and a half, definitely softened in my attitude to life and just way more compassion for each and every human being. I look into people's eyes and go, God, I, I see it. I know it hasn't been easy. And it's that compassion and that care that softness that's going to enable awakenings of you know that softening that softening of the heart space softening of, mm -hmm. of our minds opening our minds up more to some more solutions yes we have global change global crisis happening but what is the solution how can we come together and empower each other how can we help each other I, that's um, the awakening yeah, coming together yeah, I totally agree with you. And, you know, it is said by all the great artists that, and the writers and, you know, the deep, deep mystics of this world now and previously that when everything is in chaos, when everything is upside down, is the time to be free. Because mm. at that point, all the prison doors are open. It's up to us what we do with that freedom. Wow, that's quite a, that's quite a powerful metaphor. It's yeah. Quite a powerful metaphor. I feel, yes, I feel that the, you know, one of the greatest currencies we have is time. And definitely from my personal experience last year, I was just given a lot more time. Mm. And that mm. was... That was incredible just, just to sit with, experience my reality in a whole new way, being a lot more still. No, you can't get on a plane. You, you know, you can't do all these shows you want to do. It was um, terrifying, yet so needed. So needed. And, and therefore, you know, your consciousness, you can feel your mind like pop because you're like, wow, I've never asked myself that question. Wow, I've never had that conversation. Yes. My yeah. mind, you know, my mind's becoming more free during this time yeah yeah it's um a heavy price to pay for the freedom but who doesn't want to be free mm. yeah i think that's that's a that's a big that's a big um big word to muse over you know what what yes. is what what does freedom mean to you it's such an individual personal yeah. Yeah. kind of contemplative word is I think what I'd like everyone maybe to take back from this evening's conversation is that what does freedom mean to you you know freedom you know what what actually does that conjure up in your body your mind you know what does it make you feel for other people what about state are we in a free planet at the moment and just really contemplate that and sit with that and are we free it's going to be unique for everyone, that that kind of response. But that's that's something that's very important to me is that freedom to express, to be, to move, to you know, it's it's a deep question. Yes, and it's and it's and it's very personal. Yeah, it's a good question though. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah, it's a very good question, and it's an excellent question, Sequin, that you've just presented. And it's something I think to leave the listeners on because it actually makes you think about your whole life. Yes. Because so many things come into question, you know, it's mm. what's a, you know, what, what parameters are affecting your choices? What parameters are affecting what you do day to day? What's, what about your thoughts? Are your thoughts free? You know, you could go down to your body Are your body free, your movements free. Mm -hmm you know, and then you start getting 
quite cosmic with it because yeah. you know your freedom of thoughts yeah you can get really cosmic with it I spent a lot of time deliberating over that last year and the conclusion I was uh, that, I, that I was free you know you ch- we do have choice we have many choices that we make every single day that we're making for ourselves you know that freedom and what's happening with other people and other parts of the world my gosh we are we are we are free in many ways yes in many ways and I always think about this and it's a saying that came to me that you know because I write a lot you know where you do your artwork and I write a lot and Mm -hmm. I remember being at school and we did in English literature and so we did a lot of creative writing and we talked about this very subject about freedom and you know when you're young you're like 14 years old what's freedom is I don't know going to youth club or you know whatever it may be but for me I remember writing these words down and it's it was very profound and I always think about this and it's important is that no one can hold us prisoner if we want to be free. Mm -hmm. The question is, do we want to be free? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's something I think that we all need to ask ourselves. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, from, from my personal journey, you know, I was holding myself prisoner for so long. You know, I remember I even did an exhibition in a woman's prison and I was like, oh, my God, just really realizing that actually I was holding myself hostage. And by doing the shadow work and removing those shackles, I was like, I've never felt so free in my life, no matter what my physical situation is. You know, it's. It's that inner freedom to travel, you know, and and, um, travel in your mind, travel in your spirit that we we do have that and it's very surprising what we think is holding us contained and what isn't it's quite subjective it's true. it's true what is holding us but most importantly what are we holding on to mm. yes I definitely what feel act- isn't it what are we holding on to that's keeping us prisoner yeah, I mean that that's quite an infinite, infinite question. Mm. And it does take some sort of deep, deep work to really go through that. It's absolutely fascinating. It is. You know, we've got a whole world full of relationship and interconnectedness yes. and interweavings. Mm. I mean, I can tell you I'm definitely held prisoner by my phone some days. So it's like it's that sort of self-control, that self-assertion, mm. know where you're going, know what your mission is and and keeping that focus really clear. Yes, and exercising our free will. Mm-hmm. And not forgetting that we do have a um, free will. Of course, of course. You know, we, we do have, we, do. we can choose. We can choose to be free or we can choose to be prisoners. It is entirely up to us. Yes, every moment we do. Yes, we have a choice. Yeah. We completely have a choice. You know, and, it's, and it's, I think it's also recognizing that. I think it's more the recognition of I am choosing, I am choosing, I am choosing. It's um it's surprising how limited things can become when you forget to recognize that you're choosing. You're choosing what to do, you're choosing a path, you're choosing a decision. Um yeah, it's a and that comes topic. down, yeah, that comes down to responsibility because I think um maybe we don't want to choose some things because we don't want to suffer the consequences of responsibility. I can agree with that. Because that's, um, mm-hmm. that's a tricky one, isn't it? Responsibility. Oh, it's a huge one. It's taken me years to get there. Mm-hmm. It's taken me years. It's, it's inner child work, definitely. Looking at your inner yeah. child and responsibility. And I've definitely mm-hmm. say since um, members of my family have had children and friends, I can, you know, I see that it comes with age. You know, you start to feel responsible for your environment, for the people you're like, you know, for your mission. 
you know, for even my pieces of artwork, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for these little beings of sparkle, whatever they are. It is. It's, it's huge. It's huge. And then you're responsible to take care of your body and your words and your thoughts. It's, yeah, it's taken me a while to, to get there, but um, it's a beautiful place to be in one of responsibility, for sure. And every piece of artwork that you do, in a way, is a responsibility because I think what matters ultimately is our intention. If our intention is good, it doesn't really matter what you do in the respect of whether it's artwork or tending to a garden or making a cake or whatever it is. The point is, where did that intention come from? Did it come from a good place or from a bad place? And if it came from a good place, it's going to be um, full of light, like your work yes. is. Yes. I think the, the clarity, mm. the clarity of, in, of the intention and just, yeah, the positivity of it, the, the clarity of intention is extremely yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Every day I set an intention and it's either one for like improvement or giving, you know, being in service or helping another person, but an intention to, intentions are so vital. They really are for our focus. Yeah. You know, and if you make the intention, I, I always believe this and, you know, sages of old have always said this, that it's the intention that matters and counts because even if you don't get to do it, the point is that your spirit has actually propelled itself forward in making that promise with the world that I'm going to do it. But if for some reason you can't, in a way it's as if you have done it because it's created that vibration in the world already by your intention. Yes. I mean, intentions are very strong. Mm. You know, I've had people go, God, see when I can feel your intentions. You know, people can feel it because it's emanating out of your body. Yeah. You know, so if your intention, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's extremely powerful. You know, and you're intending to do something. Trust me, other people can feel it. They really can. Yeah, that's very, very true. And when I look at your work, I have to tell you this. Um, how I feel is that it, you're a little bit like a fairy godmother to me because, <laughs> you know, I think it's like you sparkle all this magic dust everywhere and everything will be okay. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, that's how it reminds me of, you know, especially the sequin work because I think, oh, you know, She's, it's very true about the intention because it comes back to that because I can feel it and I know that it's this Mary Poppins type uh, fairy godmother that is saying it's going to be okay. Oh, that's gorgeous that you feel that. I think that's definitely... Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, oh, wow. I think that's definitely my sort of Irish side coming through, those sort of mystical creatures from my ancestral lineage. They're definitely yeah. sparkling their way through, but it's also creating these beautiful pieces, birthing them into the world. If I can bring beauty into this world and bring someone an inspirational thought or bring them relief in a, in a, in a, in a terrifying moment. Yes. Um, or guide them home, you know, guide them, guide them to where they need to go where they can just gaze at something and kind of, wow, you know, they've just transcended something, then I'm happy to have been assigned this role as, a, as an artist. Well, you definitely have, and I can vouch for that. And I would encourage and really say to everybody out there to check your work out. Oh, um, thank you. Because it really does um, emanate that, for sure. And it does cheer me up. When I look at the work that you do, I think, yes, you know, magical moments exist. Wonderful. Wonderful. And thank you for that. Thank you so much for bringing that magic, your magic into the world. You know, this alchemy of 
so many different aspects of you that you're bringing into the world and that, in fact, is healing people. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank thank you you for coming tonight and sharing such profound and simply gorgeous moments, really. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. Me too, Mimi, as well. I really I have, have to say, mm, yeah, please, definitely been ahead. a little, little bit nervous about speaking because um, obviously oh. yeah, with me, communication is one of the big things that I've been working through in healing. So there have been some moments of like, oh my gosh, not, not always finding it easy to talk, but it's been a real pleasure and a real honour to, to talk with you. So thank you. Thank you very much. And for people out there, uh, all the listeners who would love to see your beautiful work and more about you, where can they find out um, more about the things that you do? Okay, so people can see my work on my Instagram, which is sequinkart. And then my website is also sequinkart as well. Is that www dot? Yes, yes. The, the three W's, yes. Yeah, the three W's. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And is that co.uk or dot com or? Oh, no, it's sequink.art. And that's it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And in a couple of lines, sequin, tell us and the world something that has helped you in your life, some words of wisdom. Oh, I would feel that it's just to never be afraid of what's inside of you. Never, never be afraid. And that going in is is like going home. And the more you dig, the more treasure you find. And it might not look as you want it to, but the more you bring it out into the light, the more, the more beautiful it is. And to just, yeah, to, to carry on massively. I know it's a really difficult time on, on the planet for a lot of people. And just the message of there is hope, there is a future and self-reflect and care for, care for yourselves and each other also. That would, that would be my message and take someone's hand that you love and just hold it tightly also oh. what I'd say. <laughs> oh, and kiss it and kiss, kiss it. it, kiss it and squeeze it and just stay connected to the ones you love and care for. And oh yeah, there's so many oh, things I want to say. It's quite hard to just to, to say sort of one thing. So yeah just thank you for listening oh and thank you for coming on and really bringing that sparkle truly truly it has cheered me up no end amazing (laughs) (laughs) perfect job come again come again and sprinkle some of that beautiful glittery stardust of yours sequin Oh, Mimi, right back at you, right back at you. <laughs> and give my love to Richmond. I will do. I'll be going for a walk <laughs> in the park tomorrow. I'll be spreading it all around and just yeah. everyone, everyone take care and have a beautiful evening, whatever you're doing. Oh, take care, Sequin. Bye, Mimi. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Sequin Gay. What an interesting lady, really. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I wish you beautiful moments and loving days. Until next time, take care of yourselves and lots of love. Thank you for listening to Secrets for an Inspirational Life, brought to you by your host, Mimi Novik. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and see you in the next episode. For more information about Mimi Novik and her books, music 
an inspirational work, take a look at her website, www.miminovic.co.uk.